started as a mid-top plan group about 10 years ago. It was made up of institutions, residents, businesses, and churches in the area to um, start looking at how this area could be developed and with the grant from that author and the Tribune Foundation, we came together with our mid-top planning strategic plan. We feel that anyone living here should feel safe and secure. Speaking of job counseling, job referral, job placement, job development. And historically, this urban need and most affiliate urban needs uh, do this type of work. So we've been doing this since 1916. We also do housing programs and trying to place people in uh, adequate and uh, safe and uh, environmental decent housing. It's down on 31st Road. I don't think that Germany had anything to do with it. The building has been here since 1971. We have 20 locations. We provide early childhood education. We provide foster care. We work uh, inside the community with various uh, community organizations. We're involved in employment. Jobs. The early childhood education affects about a thousand families every day. Uh, we uh, teach oh, young children oh, starting at the age of zero all the way to five. We work also with senior citizens and we work with teenagers. So we have a kind of continuum from very early to uh, the uh, older age. We've got the opportunity uh, of Increasing the number of uh, schools and improving the quality of the existing schools. IIT has been in the community that's been down to the Brownsville for over 100 years. And one of the primary assets that the university has always had is to be responsive to and help educate uh, residents of this community. Right now, that IIT is not only in the community but also part of the community. We have developed into an academic program where we offer a master's degree in industry studies education and an undergraduate degree in the city of In addition to that, we offer many community programs. In the building that you see is our the library, a computer lab, a long distance learning lab, classroom space, an auditorium. And so since the 1960s, this particular historic site of service in Bronzeville in a multiplicity of ways that have to do with education and it was 19, uh, 1997, I believe, that we, that Paul Vallis and Wayne Watson actually came up with the idea uh, to, to, to present to the committee, both the committee members, that we have a military academy uh, in this building. And the mayor uh, approved of that idea and we took off from that point and uh, as you see behind us now uh, is, uh, is that dream coming true. We've established um, on this site the first National African American Military Museum, the one that will be dealing with uh, African Americans' involvement in the military. It didn't have to a very concept of this time. To this time. Cool is that, and, and that's a very important uh, museum. institution to have. In fact, in Brownsville, kind of it is that like eventually right. will attract tourists uh, to the area, and as a research center for students who are still involved in the military. I think it's a very important why for us.